There's a saying that desperate times call for desperate measures. True enough, we've been getting a taste of that recently. But that doesn't say everything. Desperate times also call for patience, for thoughtfulness, for courage, and for compassion. Sometimes moving at a measured and deliberate pace is better than running in desperation. It's especially better than running blind. Running blind is a vivid metaphor that today's gospel story from John brought to my mind. It feels like many of us right now in the age of COVID-19 are running blind. A blind person on foot is better off walking, not running. Even better with a white cane feeling the ground ahead. But when you run blind, you have no buffer, no cushion, no warning. Only a desperate hope that there's nothing in your path to bring your run to a tragic end. In this gospel story about blindness... There are actually quite a few characters who are blind, figuratively, and they are running blind. And what's a blind runner? A blind runner is a desperate runner. They are desperate because wherever they are right now feels dangerous, feels out of control, feels like a place that they cannot bear to remain even for one moment longer, and some of you might be feeling that right now. Well, in John 9, pressure was mounting against Jesus and his movement. What Jesus taught and what he practiced was on a collision course with the establishment, both the religious establishment and the Roman Empire. Everyone was feeling the pressure. The disciples were obviously in the crosshairs of the authorities. The parents of the formerly blind man were under pressure because they didn't want to be accused of being aligned with Jesus. Even the neighbors were confused and baffled because they couldn't put the facts together in a way that made sense or felt safe. And the Pharisees clearly were on edge because they're tightly constructed ethical framework was falling apart in the wake of Jesus' ministry. Jesus ignored religious regulations like working on the Sabbath and associating with unclean people. Nevertheless, he was becoming a powerful healer and influencer, and he was gaining ground while the establishment was losing ground. Everyone in this story except for Jesus and the blind man, was running blind out of desperation, out of a desire to regain some control over their situation. You know, running blind can be contagious. Like a virus, it spreads until nearly everyone is running blind. So is there a vaccine against viral blindness? Well, if the blindness in this case was the need to be in control, then the vaccine was compassion. Isn't it striking that what was missing from all the back and forth dialogue in this story was any compassion for the blind man? Nobody but Jesus showed any compassion for the man himself. Everyone else looked straight through the man as if he wasn't even there and tried to get their control issues resolved. The disciples tried to resolve a theological issue about the connection between sin and birth defects. The neighbors had an issue with the evidence. Was or wasn't this the man they had always seen sitting and begging? The Pharisees were obsessed with their fear that this healing, if proven, would unravel their tidy theological framework. And the man's parents said as little as they could 
to avoid having a conflict with the synagogue. Nowhere in 41 verses of dialogue did anybody walk up to the man who was healed and ask him, what is it like to be able to see for the first time in your life? No one seems interested in that question. No one simply and sincerely praises God for showing his love and mercy to this man. One would think that even sworn enemies of Jesus would find something positive in a man born blind being able to see again. But God's compassion on the man completely escapes them. Instead, they turn inward, tending to their own control issues. And this dynamic is present in our own lives today, almost everywhere. We could probably apply it to our political lives, to the church, to the many social and physical and spiritual ills in our society. But let's also think about it today as it relates to this coronavirus pandemic that we're in the middle of. Many of our choices are being taken away. Choices about how we physically move around our community, where we go and who we're with and so on. We should, we must, we will abide by these choices being made for us but we still have complete choice, complete agency to view ourselves and those around us with the love and compassion of God. When we realize our own behavior, as innocent and well-intentioned as it may seem in normal times, might be endangering the life and well-being of others more vulnerable than ourselves, then perhaps we will find more compassion in our hearts. Perhaps our own fears for ourselves will subside. Perhaps in our physical separation from each other, we will find space for a deeper human and spiritual connection. Perhaps as we prayerfully release to God our need to control the outcome of our lives, we will find within us the power of the Spirit to walk in hope and in love and in compassion for all those who are suffering. I believe that as we lay down control and pick up compassion, we will discover that we are no longer running blind. We are walking in faith and in trust and in hope. Peace be with us all.